Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That is a nice, lively morning. What is so funny, Sophia? You're snickering already. Okay, today's August 28, 2020. It's already Friday, and today we are celebrating a very nice feast. A feast of one of the greatest doctors of the Catholic Church, who goes by the name of what, Mia? St. Augustine. St. Augustine of Hippo was a bishop of Hippo, a great doctor of the church, great philosopher, um, well, uh, who has contributed a lot to the growth of the church from the fourth century. So let's read up on St. Augustine. There's so many things. Those of you who have not yet read his uh, Manium Opus, the Confessions of uh, St. Augustine, a very, very revealing and beautiful book to read. Uh, I'd recommend you all read it when, when you know, when you're a little bit more mature, maybe. Uh, but yeah, very beautiful book. Plenty of lessons there to learn uh, regarding the life of Saint Augustine, who was uh, who was a big rebel <laughs> in many ways. Was a big rebel. Um, who uh, was a Catholic, okay? followed after the uh, footsteps of his father, who was not Catholic for a while. And that is why his mother, a Catholic mother, St. Monica, whose feast was celebrated yesterday, practically spent her days praying, praying, and praying with tears uh, for the conversion of her husband and her own children. And uh, St. Augustine led a uh, wayward kind of life in his youth, um, you know, uh, and was a very brilliant guy, very big intellectual uh, um, scholar. And uh, sometimes it's more difficult for such very intelligent people to uh, understand the faith and, and uh, embrace the faith. But once they do, once they respond to the grace of enlightenment that God gives them to understand the faith, boy, they become giants in the faith. And we have plenty of examples of this. St. Augustine is one of them. Um, then you got some other popular people now who uh, practically have followed the same uh, kind of story. You're very familiar with Scott Hahn, for example, right? So... Uh, Scott Hahn was one of those uh, people who, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> was an intellectual who didn't quite understand the Catholic faith and in fact uh, uh, persecuted the faith like anything until, until um, he realized, nope, Catholic faith is the true faith and got converted and now puts all of his effort into preaching the true faith to other people. Okay, so those of us who are on edge about our faith and don't know how to understand our faith, uh, let's turn to St. Augustine <clears throat> that we may <clears throat> obtain the help from God to understand uh, our faith better. Okay, so today we're going to be commenting on a very interesting gospel passage. Um, it's from St. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. It's a long gospel, and we're going to hear more of it at Mass today, but I just want to give you the description and, uh, and some historical and cultural um, uh, notes around this particular parable. Jesus tells about the parable of the ten virgins, right? The ten virgins who were tasked to accompany the groom and the bride in the wedding procession from the house of the bride to the house of the groom, which normally uh, during the Jewish custom happens at night, you know, and they are tasked to carry lamps, lighted lamps uh, in a procession. So like very much the way we do our processions nowadays when we process in the streets with the Holy Eucharist, right? We candles and all that. Of course, nowadays we use candles. 
But in the Jewish tradition, they had lamps, oil lamps. So apparently the custom is such that when a groom is to marry a bride, okay, uh, the father of the groom gives a signal to the groom when it is time to fetch his bride. So uh, the groom's party will go from the groom's house to the bride's house and pick her up. Yeah, pick her up and together they will go on a procession in the streets towards the house, back to the house of the groom. Okay, and that is where they would get married and celebrate. Okay, so but on the first night when that happens, there are only a select party that will be allowed to get inside the groom's house. And this would be the ten virgins, okay, and some other select friends <coughs> who would go back with the bride and groom back to the house of the groom <coughs> to start, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to start the whole wedding ceremony and and the whole uh, celebration, which takes days, many days from there. Okay, so so our Lord tells of this story of these ten virgins. They're supposed to be intimate friends of the bride and the groom. Okay, So they're just not anybody. They're supposed to be friends, good friends, uh, intimate friends. Most of them will be childhood friends because these are, these are people who have lived in, you know, these kinds of small communities and they're very well known to the bride and the groom. Right? So there is friendship that they share. Okay, there's intimacy. Right? Well, that, that they share with the families, that they assist in, uh, in this whole ceremony by, by lending their service to the bride and the groom as lamp carriers, as, you know, uh, yeah, the virgins who will carry the lamps. Okay, so our Lord tells of the story, well, okay, so there's this wedding, there's a groom, there's a bride, and then there were ten virgins. Now, but they were waiting and waiting in the house of the bride and the groom was not coming. He was delayed for some reason, right? Maybe, I don't know, uh, um, well, for some reason the groom was late in coming. So what happened was the five of the ten virgins, well, were already, the, their lamp was dying out. They didn't have enough oil. So they begged the other five, give us some of your oil so that we can keep burning our lamps. And then the, the wise virgin said, oh no, if we give them to you, then we're all going to run out. Then nobody can accompany the wedding party anymore. So go out and buy. Oh, okay, so they reluctantly went out, bought more oil. But while they were out, the groom arrived. Oops. So... Only those who remained, the five wise virgins who remained, were the only ones who were able to accompany the bride and groom to the house of the groom. And when the foolish ones came back and said, Ah, ah, they left us. So they started running after the party and started knocking. When they arrived at the groom's house, they started knocking. Yeah, hey, 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 let us in, let us in. And the groom said, mm, Ah, sorry. Sorry, no more. The door is shut. You know, you're foolish. You don't, you, uh, I don't know you, <laughs> you know. I entrusted you with such an important task and you can't even prepare for it. You can't even be ready. You can't even have what you need to perform a very simple duty of keeping your, light, uh, your, your lamps lighted and accompany us. So never mind, means you're not really my friends. So, lesson for us that our Lord wants us to understand here is we should always be prepared. Because just like yesterday's gospel, right? You don't know when the master of the house is coming. So this is still the same trend of thought. That we have to be vigilant in our lives. We have to be vigilant. We have to keep watch. We have to keep vigil, right? You have to keep vigil, watching, waiting for the arrival of the groom. Okay? Yesterday, the imagery that our Lord used in the gospel of yesterday was the master. 
right? The master of the house, okay? Because our Lord is master and Lord of, of everything, of our lives, right? Okay, so we have to await the return of the master. This time, our Lord gives us the image of a groom and a bride. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> what is the image here that our Lord is, is trying to project? The groom is Jesus. The groom is our Lord. The bride is his church. Right? That's the imagery that, uh, that, that uh, the church, in fact, uses uh, of this relationship between Jesus and the church. The church means the people of God, all of us. Right? Jesus is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. And he is going to marry the bride. He's going to unite with the bride. He's going to uh, have a, an intimate relationship with his bride and bring her Bring the church to his house. What is his house? The kingdom of heaven, where there's going to be feasting and celebration, okay, forever. And only those who are ready, only those who kept their lamps burning, will be invited in. And those who didn't do a good job, Okay? Those who didn't do what they were supposed to do on earth to accompany the church <clears throat> to the wedding feast will be shut off. Okay? And the bridegroom will say, well, I don't know you. In the same way, remember, so there are different images here of heaven and, and, uh, and people who are invited in, right? So... <clears throat> So you, you, you recall that a few days ago, we were also commenting on the, uh, the, the, the king and the wedding feast, right? And there was somebody who didn't have a wedding garment, right? So that person was also not prepared to put on the wedding garment. So, hey, out of here, right? So now, the image of preparation and preparedness is, is uh, um, um, portrayed here by way of the virgins and their lamps. Okay? So beautiful image. The virgins and their lamps. Okay. Now. So yesterday we said we, we asked the question, how do you watch? How do you keep vigil? And we concluded borrowing what our Lord told his apostles, right? Watch and pray. And we enumerated the different ways by which we can watch and how we can pray keeping the presence of god all throughout the day okay keeping the presence of our lord all throughout the day with prayer now you see now it's the lamp we have to prepare the lamp the fire we have to prepare for the fire to keep the fire the life of, of, of grace in us, the life of faith in us, we have to keep it burning. But what keeps that fire burning? What causes the combustion? What causes the combustion? Okay? The reaction of oxygen and, and, and vapor, when, once you, once you uh, light it, it boom. What causes that? What causes that combustion to keep that flame afire? The oil. The oil. Right? The oil. So the question for us is, what, what is that oil? What is that oil that these foolish virgins eh, did not bring enough of? See? The, remember, it's not that they didn't bring oil. They actually brought oil, right? They actually did some kind of preparation. They actually had a little bit, uh, a little bit to, 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 uh, to start with, to start that oil, I mean, the, the, the lamp burning. The problem is they didn't bring enough. In other words, they didn't do enough. They just did the minimum. 
They just provided the minimum. <clears throat> that is that that was the problem. They were given a task to perform and they performed it without giving it their all, without putting everything that was required to do it, without supplying the most important ingredient, the most important ingredient to keep that combustion going. They didn't supply enough of it. And that is why their flames went off. What is that oil in our own lives that we have to keep supplying in everything we do so that the flame the flame of our of our life that lightens up the day that lightens up the path where the church and our bridegroom Jesus Christ would pass through will keep burning until we reach the house of the groom, which is heaven. Eh? We are given a task. Our task in life is to keep that flame burning. Now, that flame is a symbol of many things. It's a symbol of our faith. It's a symbol of our love because the flame is just an effect. right? It's a symbol of of how much we believe and trust in God. It's a symbol even of our, of our service to others, right? Because those virgins are carrying a lamp to serve the church, to serve the bridegroom and, and, her, and his bride. It's a service to others that they are performing, right? But what is the oil that will keep our life of faith, our life of service to others, Burning constantly. What is the oil? What, Chevelle? Grace. grace. Well, yeah, that's a nice uh, attempt. But you see, grace comes from God. Right? God is the one who supplies the grace. But what should be coming from us? What is it that we cannot be stingy about like the foolish virgins were stingy? They were stingy to supply the oil. Our Lord is telling us, you got to be prepared in life, but you got to have an abundance of the oil. Otherwise, if you're stingy with the oil, you're not going to last. Your flame will die out. What is the oil that we need to supply in our lives so that we can keep that flame burning? <laughs> These kids are all pointing to each other for the answer. <laughs> okay, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Huh? What's that, Jana? What's that? You have an answer? What's the oil, Mia? You don't know? Oh, okay. Okay, here's the answer. Ah, the answer? Ah, you know? But before I tell you the answer... Okay. <laughs> okay. The answer is love. Love. <laughs> oh, I thought so. <laughs> love. Hey, the answer is love. You need to supply love. You need to supply an abundance of love. In everything you do. You need to put love in there. You need to do things because of love and out of love. You cannot be stingy with your love. See? It is love, the love that you put in everything you do. Beginning from your relationship with God, your relationship with your neighbors, to the way you do your everyday tasks, your everyday work, your everyday studies, your everyday chores. You got to put love in there. Because if there is no love, if you are not doing those things out of love for God, 
then you won't do a good job to begin with. And even if you do, it's useless. Because who's going to appreciate what you're doing if it is not done out of love and because of love? Remember how we, I began telling you about this ten virgins parable? Why were the ten virgins selected? It's because they have a relationship with the bride and groom. They were friends. And what is friendship? Friendship is? Is love. See? The relationship of friendship is a relationship of love. Meaning that these virgins were there because they were chosen presumably because of their friendship. Because they shared Love among themselves, among their friends, the bride and the groom. Right? But as it turned out, some of them were not really as intimate a friend as the others. They did not really show their, the depth of their, of their love for their friend by not preparing what needs to be prepared in order to keep the lamp burning, the oil, the ingredient that was important to carry on that task well was missing, was missing, was not enough, was insufficient. See? Now, the same thing is true with our lives. We are lamp carriers. We are like the ten virgins tasked with a very specific role, which is to shed, I mean, to, to provide light. Okay? The light of our lives, the light of our faith, the light of Jesus Christ that will light the path for the church to tread on. But we need to keep that light burning. And the way to keep that light burning is to supply the love. The love that is required in every task. We have to do things because of love and out of love and with love. And what do we mean by that? When we do things for love and out of love, it means our biggest motivation is our love for God. We love God, that's why we do things well. We don't do things well because we want to appear goody-goody right? before other people. We don't do things well just for the sake of a reputation. We don't do things well because of our vanity. We do things well and as best we can because we love God. And we want to do what is pleasing to God. Right? Just like the groom and the, and the ten virgins. The wise virgins wanted to do their work for love of their friends, the bride and the groom. And they supplied all that love that they could. Whereas the other five didn't. Okay? So we have to do things. The motivation is for love. We have to do things for love. For love for God. Love of God. And love of our neighbor. Okay? So that's the only motivation that we should have. In everything we do. And that is enough for us to do things very, very well. Now, secondly, we do things out of love for neighbor too. Right? Because the love for our neighbor is only a fruit of our love for God. If we really, really love God, we're going to love our neighbors. And we're going to do things for love of neighbor. We're going to serve our neighbors out of love for them. Not just because we've been given a chore to do. So think about this. You've got chores at home to do. Right? What are you doing them for? Is it just so that you can obey and comply with what your parents are telling you to do? Is it just so that, okay, I can get this thing over and done with so I can do my own thing? Right? Okay. I just have to drag my feet and do it. And da, 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 just do it. Bang things here. And then, then I can do my own thing. But if that's all you're doing, then it's better not to do anything. Right? It's better not to do anything 
if all your only motivation is just to get something over and done with and get rid of this chore. No, that's not the point. The reason why you have chores to do at home is this is your training ground of doing things out of love for others. This is the beginning of your training of doing things for others, serving others only, purely, with that motivation of love. Because you want to show your love for your family. You want to show your love for your siblings. You want to show your love for God by serving your family and other people. Okay? So love, love is the oil. And if we do not supply the oil, our flame will die out. Okay? The flame of our life will die out. Okay, that's it. That's it for us today. That's a very beautiful analogy, I'd like to think, of the ten virgins and their oil in their lamp. So let's keep our lamps burning. Let's learn to keep our love and supply the love in everything we do to keep the flame of our life burning until we enter the house of the groom to celebrate the wedding feast with them eternally in heaven. Okay, that's it for us, everybody. Let's be ready to go to Mass now. <clears throat> and, uh, well, <clears throat> I wish everybody a good, happy, productive, fruitful Weekend ahead of you. Yes, Joe. Yeah. We'll do catechism after Mass. Yeah, today. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.